on the run. So The Lighthouse is a story of Ephraim Winslow and Thomas Wake, two lighthouse wikis or lighthouse caretakers uh, off the coast of New England somewhere uh, in, I want to say the 1800s. I'm not sure it ever actually declares a time mm-hmm. uh robert pattinson plays a frame winslow our main character uh willem defoe defoe plays thomas wake uh wake is an older beleaguered uh wiki he's he's sailed the seas for years and he's he's got a big old bushy beard he's got a real thick accent he's seen it all and he's the caretaker of this lighthouse robert pattinson plays a frame winslow his new caretaker who's very new to the seas he comes from canada uh in up, up where the timber is as they say in the film He's got a very New York accent. Uh, he is new to this whole thing, and the two of them are locked in this lighthouse on an island, or they're just on the island, I should say. They're not actually locked in the lighthouse uh, for four weeks together, and they have to get along. Uh, the film is iconic, I think, for its presentation. It, it is in a 119 by 1 ratio, which is almost perfectly square uh it was shot on very old lenses and black and white film it was made in as as authentic way as possible to present uh the story of these two men kind of hanging on to each other and their sanity on the edge of the world uh andy what did you think (laughs) of the lighthouse I was absolutely blown away by this movie. I I did not know what to expect. I know we were both very excited to go see it. um, And I knew that it was, you know, another auteur at work. But it it was really pretty mind-blowing in a lot of ways. The... uh, the the story the symbolism the cinematography the acting like these are incredible performances by both actors um especially by willem D- willem defoe and there's so much in there i've been asking myself you know what's this about and i've been reading articles and everyone's because there's a lot of things that are fairly plain and straightforward and then there's lots and lots of symbolism and lots of ambiguity to uh kind of talk talk about and and surmise afterwards and so yeah i really loved it i was really b- blown away yeah, I I feel the same way. I I was stunned by how much I enjoyed this movie. And I remember saying on the show, I was so excited. I was worried I was I was overexcited and that I was going to be disappointed because I was I was way over the moon about how good it was going to be. Um I didn't feel that way at all. I I was incredibly pleased with this movie. I was I was glued to the screen uh being that it only has two characters in it, it is very much a character drama and watching these two men bounce off each other with this incredible chemistry uh while also trying to stay sane in an environment where most would not uh is fantastic like w- this movie really takes you on some twists and turns i, I kind of left the summary uh vague intentionally mm-hmm. the less you know about where it's going the better there's a reason the trailers are vague um man what a ton of fun uh i'm excited to talk about it so I think the first place to kind of get into this is our characters, right? Right. Uh, Robert mm-hmm. Pattinson and Willem Dafoe. What did you think of them? Um, re- really incredible performances. But as far as the, their their characters, so Robert Pattinson is a very like he's much younger than Willem Dafoe's character, and he's kind of the the lackey. Like he's going to be, he gets ordered around. He has to do all these kind of like manual labor and and hard hard and dangerous chores. And um, he's not allowed to uh, attend the light. Like Willem Dafoe is very protective of the lighthouse, of the light itself in the lighthouse. I mean, only he kind of works it and guards it. Uh, and and they're very different. Uh, he doesn't want to, uh, the younger uh, Ephraim Winslow, he, like, he doesn't want to drink. The, in an early scene, they, they sit down for a meal, and uh, Willem Dafoe keeps trying to get him to, to drink and, you know, drink, come drink with me, let's have a toast. And he just, he won't. For, for the longest time and they they kind of go back and forth and he kind of slowly uh, breaks he's like okay there's a whole lot of like gaslighting like that in in the movie by the old, older character of like this is what you should be doing listen to me i'm old and experienced how dare you right you've, you've got these two characters bouncing off each other uh in such an it's like it's like an odd couple comedy right except 
it's not all that funny for that long and starts to get real serious. Uh, and these two are, are just stuck with each other um, with few outside forces other than kind of their own delusions to guide them. Uh, Willem Dafoe's character looks down on young Winslow. He, he thinks of him as maybe a younger version of himself, right? Like a young lad trying to get into it. And so he has him kind of doing all the physical labor and you're going to listen to me and you're going to do what you're told. And, and maybe someday you'll, you'll have a big lighthouse like this one I watch. Um, Winslow, on the other hand, played by Pattinson, looks at Defoe as, as a drunk and an old man <laughs> who's washed up and doesn't know what he's, you know, he's, he's babbling and doesn't know what he's talking about. And he's certainly not <laughs> yes. helping with the absurd amount of physical labor required to keep this place running on this rock that is just ba- batten, like beaten by the waves. Uh, battered was the word I was looking for. Battered by the waves constantly. Uh, the weather is terrible in this film. Yeah, so the- already <laughs> they, 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 they have this odd mutual respect for each other, but at the same time, They've got problems with each other, and and it really makes this interesting kind of acquaintance, friendship, rivalry thing happen all at once. And again, there's nobody else for them to bounce off of. It's just the two of them, so they're constantly running into each other and at odds uh, in some way. Yeah. We, we, you mentioned the weather, and that really reminds me of uh, the setting. Uh, which I think we, we should, should talk uh, about that. we yeah. should get into. So there, there's kind of some locations. Yes, they're on a, at a lighthouse, but there's kind of some important locations within that. There's the lighthouse itself, um, which has this big spiral staircase that goes up to to the top, where um, Winslow is constantly he he really wants to be up there. Willem Dafoe is like, no, I'm the one. I'm the one who tends the light. And then they they have their their very small quarters where they where they eat and sleep and they, you know, they, they, it's a very small room where they share beds and then they, they have to eat like at the same table, very, very tight. Uh, And then you have just kind of the, the Island, the little Island that they're on itself um, is, is kind of another part of the setting. That's where a lot of these, uh, uh, there's a whole thing with seagulls. There's the sea itself. There's uh, you know different chores that have to be done around around the the little island, and so it, it really makes you feel like you're there. Like you feel wet. Like you feel <laughs> like the the wind is blowing in in your face. Like they did an incredible job of of just kind of creating this this little island and really thrusting you in the world. Yeah, and we should talk about why it feels that way. Um, when they shot this movie, I, I you know did a little looking into it because of the presentation and how it looks. And again, they they wanted it to be feel really authentic. So when they shot this movie, they went up to Canada, oddly enough, even though uh, it's supposed to be set in New England, uh, and they filmed off of these rocks off the coast, like just way out there. And they 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 built a lighthouse uh, for the movie. They ended up tearing it down after it's not still there. So it's not a it's not a it's not a existing structure. Like this is. But a lot of it's shot on location, the outside stuff anyway. Most of the indoor stuff was shot on sound stages nearby. Um, but the outdoor stuff feels so visceral. The weather is just pounding these guys in this island. And according to the crew and Robert Eggers in, in, in interviews in a recent AMA did just the other day, um, that was almost all genuine. They said they, they rarely, if ever, needed a wind machine or <laughs> waves yeah. or rain or anything. And those guys just got hammered and they shot it in april and may of 2018 so it's probably pretty chilly uh and man apparently willem dafoe and robert pattinson like they were struggling out there it was oh, rough yeah, yeah. Um, and it's because yeah because <laughs> because you get so sucked into the movie like you kind of forget like oh yeah that they, they might have to use a rain machine for this shot like because it just looks so legit like they're just constantly on this coast just getting hammered by waves and ice water like oh it's brutal mm-hmm um, we we mentioned we don't want to talk about the plot uh, uh too much, but the, no. I think we should touch on it just a little bit. That it's you know we we start on this island with these two men, and we start with you know tension between them because we have the old guy who's in charge versus the young guy who's just uh, there trying to make a living. Um, so we have a lot of tension in the beginning, and the whole film is kind of a descent in into madness, which we if kind of i figured from from the trailers um and so we get to see that and we um i was gonna say that there's it's not the kind of movie that is particularly scary like it's kind of it's been billed as a horror movie but it's not like there's not jump scares there's not it's more of a psychological kind of film yes uh i was i was kind of thinking the best way to describe that without talking about spoilers for this film um because it'd be great to talk spoilers for this movie but that's not what we're doing here uh I would liken it to, it reminded me a lot of something like The Shining. 
right? Like not yeah. it, it is it is not like a, a a gore fest or anything. It's not too visceral that way. It's very psychological. It's a whole lot of build up and there's a lot of imagery, I think, that that leads to that hard R rating that it has, but it's not yeah, it's it's not like a it's not nightmare fuel or anything. It's just kind of a movie that you just kind of turn over in your head a few times, um, which I enjoyed. Uh, I want to talk about the look of the sound stages as well. Man, mm-hmm. this the, the the interiors in this movie are so tight and claustrophobic and dark all the time. Uh, rarely are they filming inside during the day because if it's if, if there's daylight, the guys would be outside working. That's what you do, right? At night, you're inside, you're eating, you're drinking, you're sleeping. Like, that's what's going on. Um, so they film inside these just dark cab- cabins and, and hallways, and it's so dark. And, and the film is in black and white. Like I said, they, they shot it on old stock. And they shot this movie on, on film so dark. It's like double X black stock or something. I was reading about this last night. That for for lighting the film, they had to really crank up the brightness so it would come across on right. screen. In a lot of these shots, these actors couldn't see each other because the light was so <laughs> bright in front of them. And and on 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 screen, it looks great. It looks so great and genuine and feels good. But um, it's just hard to believe how many technical challenges they had to overcome to make that happen. Uh, and it totally pays dividends. It works great. Right. This is part part partially why the uh, um the ratio is what i'm thinking of is also really important is it makes the the more square ratio makes everything look really tall you know you don't have like it's it's not a wide shot it's a very tall shot and so when they're in places like you know the the quarters where they sleep they, they it makes it feel more claustrophobic or where they eat or especially when they're in the lighthouse going up these cramped stairs it makes everything look look so cramped but also very very tall like our actors look larger than life because you get a, a long you know head to toe kind of shot or you like from shot from the knees knees up and the cinematography really has to kind of tighten the screws on what you're going to see in the shot because you don't have a big wide frame you don't have that huge movie theater screen of a canvas to kind of paint your picture for your audience it's very tight so in a lot of shots you're looking at something that's going to be more like a wes anderson film than it is like a cinematic film like The Witch because the camera's just got to look straight on at what's happening. It's very it's very perpendicular. It's very deliberate. Like here's our character in the middle of the frame, and here's what's happening because you don't have enough room on screen to really put things apart. It's just very tight and claustrophobic all the time, and it really pulls you into that experience. Um, I do want to talk a little bit about just their individual performances. Um, uh-huh. I, I I know I talked about the characters a lot, but. Man, Pattinson uh, does a fantastic job of holding the role together. Willem Dafoe might might do it better, honestly. Uh, as as this very old beleaguered wiki, Dafoe takes on this incredibly authentic accent, and he delivers these really powerful monologues. There's a few of them in the film um, where it kind of explains something in a lot of detail, or maybe expresses frustration. Uh, it's it's very intense all the yeah. time <laughs> he goes on a, uh, on a couple of of rants that are really epic and there there's one um that that's <clears throat> that i that i really like where Pattinson's complaining about his um uh, like the amount of work he's having to do and and Willem Dafoe comes back with like you'll do what i tell you and you'll like it because i'm the one who decides who you get paid uh, but he does it delivers it in this incredible like minute and a half monologue and there's there's so much of that throughout the movie it's just it's unbelievable and you know people have been talking so much about Joaquin Phoenix and his performance as the Joker and Oscar this and, you know uh Willem Dafoe's going to like if he doesn't win for this role then it it's like it's by far the best performance i've seen all year yeah and and i think they they did a lot of work to make that happen uh the two of them and their, and our director robert eggers spent a lot of time in rehearsals which Apparently, funny, fun, funny story. These two actors being very different, different men. Uh, Defoe is all about rehearsals. He wants to rehearse it a million times till it's perfect. Uh, Pattinson, on the other hand, is the exact opposite. He felt like if we did rehearsals, it would take away from my like genuine performance on screen because I'm overthinking it. You know, I'm I'm just uh-huh. trying to I'm trying to follow a routine rather than do what feels natural and act. Um, apparently, the two of them really struggled with that. Uh, <laughs> During during the shoot, they didn't talk a whole lot. 
because they wanted to kind of really stay in character and kind of do their thing. And then afterwards, supposedly now they're good friends. But uh, man, it, it, it really pays off. Like these two bounce off each other in such a fascinating way. And they're so different. They come from such different walks of life. But like, man, it they, they go together so well in this movie in this odd buddy cop uh, kind of <laughs> yeah. chemistry that totally works. Um, before we kind of wrap things up, we should talk about the soundtrack. I think like you can probably mm-hmm. jump in a little bit more than, than me on that. Yes, I I really like the the soundtrack. I'm ha- I'm actually kind of forgetting a lot of it now, but I remember in the moment um, really liking it. Again, very similar to like how I like the soundtrack in the Joker. It's very moving, very string heavy, very much about uh, you know, it's not like there's themes or things you're gonna hum. It's it's more about depicting the mood in in the moment. Uh, and th- there's this big and again the soundtrack bleeds into just the sound design itself. There's this uh, kind of recurring a sound of a foghorn from like the the ship that c- kind of c- comes in and out and it it blares and that kind of gets mimicked in the sound or sorry the score itself. Yeah, our our cinematographer, I just, our cinematographer, our composer. I just had his name up and lost it. Apparently, he is, is very familiar with a lot of different, like a wide range of instruments. And for this film, he just like the way they shot it, wanted to use stuff that was genuine. So they're using old foghorns to produce sounds and really old instruments to like really get things that feel period appropriate. And the soundtrack works so well because it's so much stronger uh, in response to the limited visuals. Um, you should go see this movie in a theater if possible. Like don't, mm-hmm. don't wait for it to come home. Uh, you want to watch this in a movie in a theater where the sound is very robust because man, that foghorn just tears right through you. Yeah. And as it, as it wears on our characters throughout the film, as they hear it over and over, like you really start to feel that with them, that frustration of just like, Oh my God, that thing is so loud and so unnatural. It's just such, it's such mm-hmm. an odd sound. Um, that it it really it really bites and it's got a, it's a, a lot of charm to it. Um, I I do want to talk about. I I don't I don't know if there's a, a good way to kind of talk about the the spiral in this film in a, in a very broad way. Uh, well, I you know, I kind of want our characters to... go on a bit of a, a, a bit of a journey, I should say, like every mm-hmm. character does, right? You have to you have to overcome some obstacles to arrive at the end of the film. Mm-hmm. Well, I I wanted to tie that into uh, kind of themes and meanings. Uh, or like symbolism, which, uh, so that's one thing if, if you haven't seen it yet, uh, there's lots of symbolism in, in the film itself. There are, you know, there's themes of water, of identity. There's lots of ambiguity. Like I said, I've been thinking a lot about what is this film actually about? And I, and I don't want to go too much into it, but there's a lot to think about. There's a lot to see. There's this whole thing with, uh, seagulls and, um, Thomas Wake, the Willem Dafoe's character, is incredibly superstitious about a number of things. He's like, "Don't, don't hurt the seagulls. Don't do this. Don't do that." He's 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 a man of the sea, and he's very much uh, superstitious that way. There's, um, as we've seen from the trailer, there's a thing with mermaids, and there's a lot going on in this film. It's about a, a lot of things. Um, so just you, you have to really pay attention. There's a whole thing. Uh, there's allusions to Greek mythology uh, that are quite strong as well. There's so much in here, a lot to figure out, and when you I, you know, I read. I've also read some interviews with Robert Eggers, and he's like he doesn't really have solid answers for when people ask. It. It's like it's a lot of it is up to uh, ambiguity or into or interpretation. Yeah, there's a lot of throwbacks in this film, um, not only to yeah things like Greek mythology, but also to uh, classic classical film uh, and old black and white pictures. There's classical paintings. Uh, that are attributed to in this film, there are modern films that are paid tribute to. The Shining, in particular, um, there, mm-hmm. there's one scene that's very reminiscent of that. Somebody pointed out on Reddit there was a scene that comes right out of The Big Lebowski, which followed Robert <laughs> Eggers saying in an AMA that, that uh, a film that he not a lot of people would know he's about is The Big Lebowski. And it's like, oh, wow, like that's that seems to be almost a tribute, you know? Um, there's a lot going on under under the hood of this movie that all comes together to make this really, really grand experience about a very small situation with two very small men on a, on a, on a very small rock. Um, really outstanding for, for a 90 minute runtime. It didn't feel too long. Like it didn't feel like it overstayed its welcome. Um, and, and this, this kind of spiral, like I said, this kind of, you know, journey our characters go on. It, it starts off so subtle and before you know it, you're on the tracks and you're going down the hill and you can't stop. And it's great. And, mm-hmm. and I, I really enjoyed it. It, it is 
uh, a tremendous movie. Anything else you want to talk about before we get to recommendations? <laughs> no, I think I'm ready. Andy, would you recommend The Lighthouse? Absolutely. This is one of the best movies I've seen all year, and it's one of those that we had a lot of anticipation for it, and it blew us away even more, Which, and that's a really rare thing to do. Um, I think this is a new classic. I think this is a film you could watch a hundred times and still have questions about its meanings and its themes and, and its characters, so highly, highly recommend. I'm in the same boat. Uh, this movie's tremendous. Uh, it's really good. It's not for everybody. I think there's there's a large group of uh, a large chunk of the population that would not be into this movie at all. They would think it's super lame. I think you have to watch it under certain conditions. If you watch it at home with the lights on, you're probably going to think it's dumb. Like you really got to get into the zone for this movie. Almost like I would say something like The Shining or how I felt about last year's Mandy. Like get, if you if you have the opportunity to watch this, go see it in a the theater. And if you can't, watch it at home with the lights off late at night with your phone far away and just get pulled into like what this movie's doing. And I promise you won't be disappointed. It's a ton of fun. 